and traffic the people out here go and apply to the first three businesses they can <laughs> go to right <laughs> hey can i get an application oh you're not here for takeout okay uh 650 is second day of june and uh, one of the announcements that was made uh over the weekend was the reopening of public uh, parks and beaches and so we wanted to bring on the acting director of the department of parks and rec uh, john birch onto the show good morning john good morning chris uh, so and Sabrina's on there with you. Oh, yes, of course, good morning. you know it. Oh, good morning, Sabrina. Good morning. So, how was it, uh, John, over the, with the reopening of the public parks and uh, beaches? Well, uh, <laughs> we've been pretty busy. Uh, you know, I hope people understand that the, the process of uh, reopening, you know, takes time. Uh, all of this occurred because of the health crisis that we're in. I, I understand, or I hope everyone understands why uh, our parks and beaches had been closed down and and basically is to prevent or stop the spread of the coronavirus. And uh, during this time, uh, I was brought on board. So I hit the ground running at uh, DPR. I was brought on board uh, as part of the governor and lieutenant governor's initiative to uh, refurbish the facilities uh, within DPR's uh, you know inventory so i was i've been kind of busy <laughs> since i started at dpr and you know the process of getting permits getting uh things clear to start building or refurbishing uh take takes time e- even in the private sector if you're going to build a house it takes a couple of months or so to get the the paperwork done and uh same as with the government and especially if you're working with federal funds that you have to make sure that you adotto you know all the i's and cross all the all the t's uh, we we don't want to waste any money we don't want to return any money to the federal government and uh, uh, we see this also as a way as to uh, restart our economy by infusing some uh, new money in into the economy you know once we start spending money on projects uh, people earn money and then they go out and spend it and it goes on and on it's a domino effect uh, across the entire island so one is we're trying to accomplish two things is uh, we've had problems with over the years complaints about uh, the the restrooms in our public parks not being up to standards so during this downtime we decided to take advantage of it uh, and and turn this crisis into something good and so we decided to go through and and start the repairs and uh we went into uh court two on uh, right at the very beginning that uh, the paperwork was completed and the repairs were actually started. So I know I'm going to get a lot of complaints, and I have been, uh, that why are the restrooms closed? What kind of complaints have you been, uh, John, sorry, well, what, what kind of complaints have you been getting? What are the, the people saying? They're saying we'll open the bathrooms <laughs> there at the park, and why haven't, uh, why didn't we do this at the beginning of the uh, of the crisis? At the beginning of the of the shutdown and yes we did we were getting the paperwork done it, it takes time i hope people understand that you just don't say uh, i want to build something and you just go out and, and build it you know there's a lot of red tape you got to go through and it usually takes a few months you couldn't use so, the emergency uh powers route uh i'm trying to make sure we do things following all the rules and procedures within gov Guam. Right. Mm-hmm. uh I was brought on board as the initiative to get it going. I'm part of that, and part of the initiative bringing me aboard was to get things fixed. And that's what I'm doing about following uh, established protocols. Right. So, no, I I was unaware that uh, there could be any emergency declaration where I could just go out and repair restrooms because. Uh, I mean, what I'm what I'm hearing, what John, of, what we're seeing in the uh, COVID-19. That's, right. This is. What I'm doing, we're using other funds, Department of Interior funds from the uh, Land Water Conservation Fund. Right. So that's not part of the CARES Act or, or the other funds that are available. So I, I'm not sure if I have the authority to go down and shut things down and just say uh, uh, people to come out and, and, and start working because there is a bid process and DPR simply, uh, we cut the uh, request for uh, proposals that we want a project uh, started and if it's with construction or something involving construction it goes to uh, department of public works everything else maintenance purchase materials and all that goes through gsa uh so yeah there are procedures 
that we must follow. And of course, it takes time to, to do that. So, um, you know, I'm simply following proper protocols established by our local government and the rules established under the fund that we're accessing, which are federal funds uh, to refurbish uh, as much of the uh, inventory within uh, DPR's control, which is one of them are the bathrooms which and restrooms, which we've been getting a lot of uh, complaints about over the years. Right. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, while, while people complain when they're not working properly and they're shut down, uh, when you shut them down to repair them, we still get complaints. So the way I look at it is, you know, whether I start the work or not, I'm going to get complaints either mm -hmm. way. So might as well do what's right. Sounds like you got a problem with people complaining, John. <laughs> I mean, they're going to complain so because they're happen. they're frustrated. I mean, so, this is not a new problem, yeah. but that's well, why they're complaining. It's it's human nature. You know, most people want things now, and uh, they'll get it. I think it's in better condition, and hopefully, some of those restrooms will start being completed within a, a couple of weeks, a week or so. Mm -hmm. And we have other projects uh, we were that are starting up, like uh, the tennis courts are another one. And currently, also a couple of uh, basketball courts out How there. How about the pool? Yeah. The pool. The pool is another one, yes. Uh, that's one of the main reasons I was brought in. Not just the pool, but even the Potato Stadium. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, when I came in, if, just like everybody else on the island, because uh, you know, I'm pretty new in there right now, uh, just like everyone else, uh, we were, we were frustrated that our, our facilities uh, were closing down because of neglect basically that's what's it and people are blaming uh the contractor uh but i think the blame goes all around it goes even into the parks and recreation and even into the former director too right uh, well him and perhaps ones prior to him because uh this is a long ongoing uh issue uh you know we've read about this in in the, in the papers uh we've heard it on the news and this is not something that just occurred recently Mm -hmm. uh, it's a, a problem that's been going on for years. And, you know, the, the for the Ganya, the uh, swimming pool, uh, that, that pool is over 50 years old. Uh, I remember my, my children when I was a young man, and they were going to the pool. They were part of the Monokai swim team. And, and they, we spent a lot of time there. And uh, we've had issues back then with the pool being shut down. Now my children are in their mid-40s. They have their children, my grandchildren. Mm -hmm who are also were, have been using the pool. And uh, for the most part of that time, uh, it shut down. So yeah, this is an ongoing problem that's been going on for years. The pool is over 50 years old. I've been told that the life expectancy of, of the concrete used in the pool because it's underwater and the neglect and all that, that it's 50 years. And the, the pool is over 50 years old. I think it hit uh, year mark uh, last year or sometime around there we got a comment here uh john it yeah. took a pandemic to repair the restrooms bottom line <laughs> so where well, where are we yeah I'm, I'm part of that initiative mm -hmm. uh from the governor and lieutenant governor i'm brought in because of issues like that the pool and, and the restrooms my job. Well, this, yeah yeah okay, well let's just start with the pool where are we with the aganya pool okay i was trying to explain that uh, the pool's old it's reached its maximum lifespan if mm -hmm. i repair it i can repair it uh, we put up bids and uh, the lowest bid came we, we were it looked like uh, before i got in they were planning to spend about one hundred fifty thousand to repair it uh, the lowest bid came in way over uh 250 260 thousand dollars and uh, that's about a quarter of a million dollars right there uh to repair a pool and with all the people i i, I spoke with and the reports i've read uh, it's going to be a, a temporary fix, a band-aid fix that could probably keep the pool running for another year or two years before we have to spend about the same amount of money again. And this is due to the neglect of, of simply not taking care of it. I mean, you could look at your own vehicle, right? You buy a vehicle, they'll tell you that it has a certain life expectancy, and by the time that's over, you buy another one. But if you take really good care of it, you could extend that life expectancy. In this case, uh, the pool was neglected, so the life expectancy... Uh, well, if it's extended, it, it's, it's simply going to be repair after repair after repair. So what I'm looking at, and uh, I've discussed this with the governor, is to build a new pool. And I, and because the current pool, I also looked at, okay, what if we 
put a liner inside and try to extend it to make it Olympic size. It's short by about what three to six inches, somewhere like that. Uh, if if you cut the concrete, extend it, you have new concrete. It don't really won't really bond with the old one. We will have cracks. We will have leaks. So I'm trying to look at what uh, the taxpayer can get for for their their the money that we're going to spend and, and get the best deal. And I believe the the best deal is to build a new school and. Uh, she would build it in where the original location is, is the other question. So I've been looking at multiple sites. Uh, Joe Borja of the Department of Land Management is assisting in that in locating government property uh, central, somewhere central in, in, in the part of the island uh, where we could build a new pool. And I'm looking at if we're going to build a new one, we might as well make an Olympic size one and go all the way. And my understanding is that. To be able to pull up at the northern end costs about $2.1 million. So that should be what uh, we, we have to target pretty much for a pool in the central part of the island. So should we uh, repair the old one or build a new one? I think the best thing is why don't we just go for it and build a new one and end all these issues that have been occurring over the years with the, with the older one and then start with uh, a good program of monitoring. Uh, should we go out and contract uh, uh, the maintenance to the private sector? The answer is going to be uh, yes. DPR doesn't really have uh, much of a choice because uh, if you look at the history of the Department of Parks and Rec, I, I came from the Bertalli administration back in the 80s. Now you're talking several decades later. Uh, back then, uh, Parks and Rec was a pretty large department within the government of Guam. Over 220, 240 employees with a budget about over eight million today, and even in the 90s, where I've gone back and found actual records, it was over 202 employees with a budget about eight million. Today, we're 43 employees with a budget of 3.6 million dollars. So, with inflation and everything, the department has been severely cut. So, there's been severe issues uh, with my predecessors of keeping the department operating because of the the cutbacks. So does does the Parks and Rec actually have personnel on hand to maintain the pool? The answer is going to be no. We have to seek help from outside. So we're going to be faced with, unless we hire personnel with expertise, our option is to outsource it and through contracts. Except now what I'm looking at is that we must have people on board that can better monitor these contracts. Because that was the failure was... Uh, you hire someone to take care of something, and then you don't go out and verify that mm -hmm. the actual work was was done. So, so John, I wanted to ask: Was this the? We're talking about building a a, a whole new pool now, and we yes. still have like the Dededo pool, and I don't even think that's really old. Um, no, it's not. It's and, not that and the story there. Yeah, yeah I, and I we're I don't, we're not even using that pool, and there were issues with that pool, and so we're talking about Same a thing. new pool. Yes. We can't. Yes. We have one in Dededo that's. We got to have to repair the northern pool. I wrote uh, to the director of uh, public works, asking him to expedite that because I want to get that one processed through. Because, like I said, DPR processed the uh, the request for, and we we identify the funding. We process the request to begin the process. But once we get to that point, public works takes over if it's construction, and um, uh, they go out. Uh, they start the bidding process and and then they select the contractor. In the end, we get it back at DPR. So I'm not involved in that process. Uh, currently, it is at Public Works. Uh, uh, they are working on it. Are we talking about and the Dededo pool still? Yes. Okay. The is the fix? I mean, what what kind of fix is it, John? Is it a fix that's going to be so costly we might as well build a new one, or is it something? No, like no, 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 no. <laughs> that pool's. Uh, problem with that was neglect. So we, because of that, we have to repair certain items in it. I don't have the list before me. Uh, we did have a compliance issue with that that I read that came out from uh, public health or public health shut it down. And uh, so I looked at all the points that they made. I put place that in. And I understand we have to take care uh, and place some parts like buy the, the salt for the filtering systems and all that. Uh, so it was basically maintenance. We got a, uh, some items that we got to re replace, but I don't think it's going to cost over $50,000 compared with the Hagania pool. Uh, so 
I hope to get, but you know, I won't know the exact price till the bids come in. So we hope, and I hope that uh, if we get that going, once we clear through public works, we could have everything done within a month. And the paperwork has already been worked on, so it's just a matter of getting through that process. It doesn't happen overnight. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of issues with compliance as far as uh, with the federal funds, and another one is meeting the uh, the deficiencies that public health uh, identified. Is it, is it really that complicated, though, John? It kind of seems like people do it all over the island every day. They take care of their pools. Yes. I mean, we have so they, many examples. Do. It's it, it yes. If you were private, that's mm-hmm. that's true. Uh, but we're working with federal funds here. Uh, it it'd be great if Gov Guam had a lot of had all of this money on it in its own coffers for us to go in and abide by just simply our local rules of procurement. Uh, but we don't, and especially now that uh, we're in this crisis, you know, the economy took a big hit, and the Department of uh, Parks and Rec the the main part of our budget, just like uh, GVB, comes from the uh, tourist attraction fund. And you know where our tours are. If we don't have tours, we don't have money coming in. Then we have difficulties of keeping our operations running. So if that doesn't occur soon, uh, DPR's budget, uh, if they're going to keep us operating, is going to have to switch us over to the general fund. But currently our budget is with the tourist attraction fund. Right. So there's an issue of money. So. Uh, our job is to, to look for federal funds to, to take care of these projects. So I said it's a it's, it's bigger picture now that we're in crisis. It would be a whole lot easier if I came in the department during regular times where you have access uh, to operations that were shut down during this period of time. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of Gulf Guam was shut down. So mm-hmm. uh, even trying to get regular requisitions through the government mm-hmm. has been right. extremely difficult right. because that was limited to emergency processes that dealt with the coronavirus. So Mm -hmm. if I wanted to get trash bags to pick up trash, because we are constantly picking trash up in the parks, I'm running short of that. Mm -hmm. So hopefully BBMR is now up and running where they'll process our regular requisition so we can get this all through GSA. It's not like you you have your wallet, you go to the store and buy trash bags. You can do that instantly. Uh, There is a process that we work through with, with the government. It's not that simple. You have to understand the actual operations of the government. And while I'm new to Parks and Rec, I'm not new to government operations. Right. Mm-hmm. So, so knowing that, there there have been procedures that we must follow. That's what I'm trying to explain is that uh, people think that it can happen overnight. Uh, you can take the ball and start running, and uh, you see the issues of procurement that even the governor and others have been having where people mm-hmm. say, why don't you do this now? We yeah. need it today. Mm-hmm. If so, you do that, you I, I think though, people. John, people don't want it to happen. I mean, they understand it's not going to happen overnight, but I mean, over a month, over a year, over years. It's well, just... I'm hoping to get that done. Uh, the Northern Pool, I'm get, hoping to get that done. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to push it so that we can get it done within a couple of months or so. Okay. And then John, so uh, the Northern Pool, a couple of months. Again, you pool, uh, forget about it because we're going to try and uh, buy, uh, build a new pool. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm told to repair it, I'll repair it. But it's going to cost a quarter, quarter of a million dollars, and I have not been given the instructions to go there. Uh, I'm looking at the other options right now, mm-hmm. and then it, and I'm also looking at uh, trying to obtain uh, federal monies to do it, mm-hmm. so that we don't have to dip into our local funds yeah. that we desperately yeah. need, need here. And if we bring in new federal monies, that adds to our economy. Uh, it'll be new money entering, and that would help everyone out. Uh, by you know how that works, yeah. right? how, mm-hmm. how things start, mm. and so that's what we're looking at, trying to uh, find a way to 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 help the island on top of getting these things operational. So, yeah, I know it, it's it's a controversial thing. I've been on the other side complaining, you know, before I got in. Now that I'm in here, sitting on the hot seat, uh, it's my job to get it done mm. and as quickly as possible. Don't burn your dog in, John. <laughs> Hey John, yeah, though I'm, I'm wondering though with the with the pools, right? Let's say Perfect World, we yeah. did our job and they were up and running. Would that be something that would be allowed to open, uh, given the the COVID and the you know the social distancing? In your opinion, so if the pools were up and running, could we open them today? I I don't see why not. Uh, my understanding, uh, it's safer to be outside mm. than it is inside. Uh, you know, with the uh, the aerosol mist that comes out whenever we speak. That's why we must wear masks, especially when we're inside. 
be outside, the wind and everything blows things away. Uh, I worry about things being left on uh, equipment like park equipment, playground equipment, uh, because it takes time for that to disappear. But if you're out in the grass and open and all of a sudden in, in the water, I think uh, that should uh, clearly wash away mm-hmm. the virus. Right. But uh, I'm not an expert on that. Right. Mm-hmm. I've just been told from what I've been reading uh, that it, it's definitely safer to be outside and that's how come uh i mean right now we're into court through too and we've since we moved into there people have been out and venturing into the parks uh, a lot more before it, it looked like a ghost town but in the early morning and and, and later evenings uh people out there exercising jogging walking uh walking their dogs or whatever and and uh and swimming and so i see more people out there now that uh, we're officially entering summer because the school systems, have, well, they've been shut down, but uh, many students have been on distant learning with uh, UOG, GCC, and even GDOE. Mm-hmm. Now that As we're officially in summer, mm-hmm. I expect the, the, the parts to, uh, to fill up because mm-hmm. there's not too many alternatives available for people right now. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of businesses that are geared up towards this have been shut down and are still shut down. Mm-hmm. So. Yes. If the parks open up, I expect uh, it to fill up rather quickly, and uh, more so if we enter into uh, core three. Mm-hmm. Has there get into, uh, yes. Has there been any uh, discussions to uh, get out of the pool business and privatize it? I mean, it, it just seems like if you don't have enough staff to maintain them, and we don't really have a good track well, record of keeping them uh, open. No. And, and then, I mean, just when you look at, like, Southern High School, I mean, I don't yes. think that's under Parks and Recs, but that place... It's not. It's it's so sad that they built this beautiful pool, and I don't even think it was uh, ever used. You're correct. I was thinking when I first came in of uh, of looking at the uh, the pool down at Southern High. My understanding uh, after speaking with the engineers, they, they were telling me, "You think uh, the Agonia pool is in bad disrepair?" They said, "You don't even want to go look at that pool that was built down there. It's worse. Mm, it's a waste I'm not of sure money." For a fact of that. But that, that's what uh, some engineers have informed me. Because I said, why can't we just go fix that one and use it as a something for the community and and GDOE? And they said, no, nah, you, you don't really want you don't really want to look at that. It's going to cost more than than to repair the the pool in Agonia. So, you know. So uh, listen, any talks about just getting fine. out of the pool business? <laughs> well, that that would be nice. But uh, we live on an island. Our people, I, I really believe uh, our people need to learn how to survive in the water. It's all around us. How do we train our young people uh, to be safe is teach them how to swim, teach them about water safety. Mm-hmm. And it's difficult to, to do that in the uh, in the ocean. I mean, it, it, no, I'm not say, I'm saying the government get out of the pool yeah. business and let a private. Well, uh, right. uh, has there been any talks about some sort of private partnership or a private um, I'm, I'm still privatizing at, uh, it? Oh, well, the government could build it, and that's what we're looking at, right. and and it's still on the table for outsourcing uh, the maintenance. Mm-hmm. Except, uh, just like everybody else, when you hire somebody to do a job, you have to watch what they do to get the best out of the dollar mm-hmm. invested. And that has been a failure on the government part, and that's right. what I was trying to say in the beginning, is the failure of the pool and what caused the neglect is not just the contractor. The contractor is a private business person, and their job uh, basically is, is to make money. I mean, that's why you go into into business yeah. in the private yeah. sector. And if you can, and some people feel that if you you can get away because you're allowed to get away with cutting corners uh, to make that extra profit, you're going to take advantage of that. Mm-hmm. The part of us in in the government is we must enforce our rules, enforce the contracts, make sure that they're following it to the letter, so that the people paying for it, the taxpayer, get the best uh, um, best mm-hmm. results for the investment. Okay. So. Should it be private uh, built? Well, I'm not too sure how many private uh, companies can afford to build a, a private pool aside from the hotels, and then the price tag for average people to use it's going to be extremely high. Mm-hmm. But if the government builds it and then uses the assistance of the private sector to, to run it and then just have people in positions in the department that is overseeing it uh, to make sure the contracts are being enforced, and everything should go well. And that's what should have happened with this last contractor. And this was hired since the previous administration and worked its way into this one. 
And because of that, uh, I was brought on board, and uh, my job's to fix that. So I'm doing my best. I've only been on board for a couple of months. Right. And, and, and you can see by the result of all the work that has and is taking place now, I mean, it's public knowledge. You go out to the, to the parks and everything, and you can see what's happening. And, and while I say this is uh, the, the tenant governor's uh, project here, I was brought on board as part of that initiative to, to push this board for for the lieutenant governor and, of course, the governor, mm-hmm. because they brought me on board mm-hmm. and they said, this is what's going to happen and you're going to take care of it. So, of course, I keep them up to date on what I'm doing. And if they have any comments uh, or recommendations, I I listen to that and I try to, to take care of it. You know, that's my job. And uh, what they want to do is and I've been told by the governor that uh, we will get the property to build in the pool. We will get the money. It will be done for me to proceed with it. But I'm also to repair the northern pool. Now, mm-hmm. the, the stadium was another issue that came up in the past. And uh, right now, a lot has been done at the stadium. It's operational, except for nighttime games. We could ha- use it now for, for daytime games uh, because I need to repair the lights. Uh, do we have funding for that, federal funding? The answer is, is yes. That's going to come up soon, again, when we start repairing that. But if the word comes out that we can open gyms and get people together, we can social distance in the stand there. You know, we have a whole lot of bleachers up there, uh, chairs. Uh, but we can only have daytime games. But uh, as far as that, but the sales stadium, that's where it's at. The restrooms work uh, uh Pretty much, you go in there. You could take a shower. You could use the toilets. You could, mm-hmm. the teams could change and so on. Mm-hmm. So, so what's the timeline to to get Paseo back up and running? Uh, well, it's when Core Three opens. Okay. And uh, but we won't be able to do nighttime games right, right, right. because uh, the floodlights need to be replaced. Mm-hmm. And, so that's uh, the only thing get, left on the checklist is to get the floodlights replaced. Yeah, I like to get it painted and make it look uh, nicer. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that's. Uh, you know, aesthetics, uh, functionality, uh, it's it's ready. Mm. Do you have like a maintenance that, uh, contract for that? <laughs> no. Mm. I have uh, my guys doing it, uh, and, and they're taking care of it. I hope that uh, I get a lot of these things uh, done because, to be honest with you, I don't have the personnel on board to handle everything. We have right. over 75 yeah. parks. Uh, we have a whole bunch of other things. We also handle uh, things in the water along the beach. Yes, lifeguards. And not just on land. I mean, yeah. the, we also have historic preservation. We have a so about half of my staff is dealing with historic preservation. Mm-hmm. And that program up there yeah. at yep. HP is uh, federally funded. So I want to keep that one rolling and keep it moving. I mean, we have to protect our, our archaeological sites. We have to protect the, the, the culture. And that's all part of that. So when people see Parks and Rec, it's not just recreation. It's a whole lot of other things. Right. The, the mandates are, are huge. The responsibilities are big. Okay. And, and real John, quickly, because we're going all over the place, yeah, John, what, what's the status yeah. of the opening of the restrooms? Yeah, and then, John, okay. also, um, I mean, yeah. if you knew that the parks were going to reopen and you had you know all these months during the lockdown of the COVID, why wasn't more done to ensure that our people can go to the park and maybe wash their hands i mean because they're telling us to wash our hands they're telling us to you know do things to avoid the spread of covid so why didn't you foresee that we were going to open the parks and you knew that the bathrooms were going to be closed so are do we have anything there like the portable sinks or the portable uh the porta potties anything there for people to use and what's the status Uh, on that okay we were working fast and uh trying to do the best we could and trying to get it fixed before we reopened I was not aware that the parks were going to open this early. I uh, thought we had more time. But uh, apparently uh, uh, we were able to hold the curve flat enough uh, to allow things to open. And while I was advising the staff that I'm working with that we could open at any time, but we're expecting to follow the CDC uh, uh, timelines that were set, you know, from when, when we go from condition one, two, three, and then to four. Uh, you know, sometimes things happen a little quicker. And, and for the good of the community, I understand why these things are happening. It's just that uh, uh, I was hoping to be done, and uh, I wasn't. Now, uh, to get the other stuff is uh, pretty much uh, do I have the resources to purchase these items? The answer is no, not at the moment. Uh, if I had more time to look for it and try to identify those, perhaps I could have. 
but the fact is, is that construction did start. We we're rushing on it, trying to get things done and get things through during the actual shutdown. Uh, and we open. We're not yet in core three, but when we do, I hope to have this ready uh, for for that period of time because uh, going into where where the parks are open and the restrooms are closed, uh, that was a big issue that I was faced with. And that's how come I went out. I contacted the various media to explain what's going on and what I'm actually working on uh, with a limited amount of, of staff because you know when we went into court two. That's when we started opening up and bringing in uh, the other parts of uh, government operations. And then more recently, uh, just this week, uh, we were told to bring in the rest. So now, uh, believe it or not, I've been there for two months, and I've yet to meet all the employees. There's only 43 of them. Did you meet uh, your deputy director? I know he was working mm-hmm. quarantine. He's been in quarantine, yes. And that's, a, that's also another thing. He's been up at the quarantine facility. So I've was brought in and I've been operating the department and uh, hopefully uh, he, he reported to me the other day that he was tested he came out negative uh, because I wanted to make sure that before the deputy returns to DPR that uh, he's not infected and he won't because I have limited staff and I have, must take care of these people uh, I depend on them a lot to get the work done I can't afford to have any of them get sick and 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 worse is should they come down with the virus so i required that he get tested and be cleared before he returns to work at dpr oh it wasn't a a a policy for them to get the deputy directors and directors to get tested it was just something that you wanted done i wanted desperately for that because uh i i I do need my deputy back in the department i do need the the extra help because you know we're we are shorthanded like i said i i haven't had the luxury of having a deputy I, I don't have a secretary. I do my typing. I do. I, there's no money to buy to hire a secretary in the department. DPR. I'm trying to explain is bare bones. Right. So you and haven't had a deputy director down. since uh, you've been there, because he's been assigned to quarantine uh, patrol. You got it right, right off the top. Yes, yes, ma'am. What about the grass cutting, uh, John? A lot. I'm getting a lot of texts and comments about uh, grass uh, at uh, Tapungan Park and PD taller than a toddler. Uh, yeah, we're seeing it. So again, I want to go back to if you knew we we're going to reopen, why wasn't more done to prepare? Okay, uh, I do have a contract for some grass cutting, and the contract is uh, is something that happened before my time. Uh, it's going to expire this year, September 30. But it seems like the contractor is going to sign the smaller parts down south. Uh, I want to when we come up with a new contract. I want to have the new contract to identify and have the larger parts part of the cut grass cutting uh responsibilities but uh currently dpr i mean my total group within the parks department you know uh are 11 people of that i have two assigned to the cemetery and basically it comes down to i got about four people cutting grass for over 70 plus parks uh going north to south and all over the island and the others involved in, in other things with maintenance. So, yeah, we do have a severe shortage. I'm going to acknowledge that. So uh, you have four I mean, people, f- staff, cutting grass, and then you have a g- grass-cutting contract with a company that only cuts grass in the South? <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. How much there, are we paying I, I this contractor? Me, and and Was that in the it? contract, like, hey, you're only going to cut grass in the South? In, Is it, in I mean, specific parks. In specific parts this happened before my time um, I looked at it and I said this is going to change what about like a multi-agency effort John I mean we see like yeah. you know with the I, with the commodities yeah. where they're folding in different agencies I, have yeah. you have you made the ask to anybody's like hey we're drowning here the grass yeah. is tall we're opening the parks <laughs> governor can I get somebody to bush cut well we we've gotten our, our people out there we've been, we've been working on it and yes public works has been a great help uh, they help us up at the cemeteries. We work hand in hand, for example, we have the Veterans Cemetery uh, with the Veterans Affairs Office to maintain and help their folks at the Veterans Cemetery, and they do likewise of us up at Tigua. And uh, so, yes, we have been, uh, we try to see it as one government, and we've reached out and we've been assisting each other wherever we can. Uh, we had Department of Agriculture, they, had, uh, they have a program ongoing where 
uh, with DOG and other areas that have come down to the Paseo at Liberty Park and removed all the trees, uh, what they identified as rhino infected that have to be removed. And so they're ongoing stuff uh, like that that are ongoing. Um, so while DPR is in, in the situation is, yes, uh, we've been coordinating with other departments, GVB, uh, uh, DPW, uh, agriculture, and, and so on. But uh, with with the shutdown, uh, you know, this really hampered our ability, just like everybody else. I mean, if you wanted to go to a store, you couldn't go there, and if, uh, certain items just weren't available. Same in the government. Operations are shut down. Now that they're opening up, uh, people are called in this, this just this uh, past Monday. Uh, people even in Parks and Rec, my recreation people are coming in, and they're uh, gearing up to hopefully that we go into four three and start opening up our programs. Uh, uh, first time I'm meeting several of those people. So like uh, what I tried to explain earlier is that uh, I came in during the shutdown. So uh, while I know who they are by name and what they're supposed to do, personally I have not met them. And for a department of 43, I should have met them all on the first day. I just did not have that luxury or that opportunity right yeah to do so, so. let's so, get let let's yeah. let you get off the phone and you can go meet your <laughs> staff and tell them <laughs> you you know, a lot of work to yeah do. it sounds like we're taking I'm, up your time john i'm usually at the office by this time okay so but, what, what i understand right. we gotta bring we gotta let the people know out there what's going on what are the difficulties and how this is impacting the entire island do you know how to bush cut john oh yeah yeah oh, okay let's <laughs> go let's get our bush cutter <laughs> <laughs> Set the example, you know, I'm pretty sure your staff would love that. Yeah, except I also have to work on other things like running through payroll and everything, getting them paid. Oh, that's And good. if yeah. I go out and bush got it. Right, I oh, got it. Paper, which is tremendous. <laughs> okay, John. So okay, Chris. Thanks, Appreciate John. it, yeah. Good morning, and uh, I'll keep you updated as uh, when I find out exactly when the contractors are going to right. complete various projects and when others are going to start. All right. Okay, thanks, John. Okay. Wash your hands. Be safe. Okay. Yeah, you too. Right, Stay right. safe. Bye. Wash your hands, but not at the parks because there's no sink. Um, we're going to play this uh, tutorial uh, coming up here from the Department of Labor on how you can uh, apply. And then also we're going to get uh, Speaker Tina Munia Barnes uh, coming up in the show and uh, schedule to get Mayor Paul McDonald to talk about this uh, health insurance uh, choice bill. Of course, uh, Mayor McDonald and, and many of you guys have uh, struggled with the big bad off island insurance company and i was kind of thinking about when they had that hearing with the uh, uh, etna folks and they couldn't even answer any questions because they're headquartered in the state so i know people are still uh, very frustrated about that and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, coming up here at uh, 728 also on the way we got uh, kathy castro from the guam chamber it's the KUAM News Takeover, Guam's favorite, containing COVID. Good morning. Situation is Keeping you informed, KUAM News brings you Banking 671.